Okay. In our last pencast, we discussed this notion of parallel lines. Uh, if we have a line AB and a point C that is not on that line, then we mentioned that there would be two lines, uh, a right parallel line and a left parallel line, that are in essence the closest a line can get to intersecting the line AB, but still not intersect the line AB. And uh, one very important question that we need to ask about this is, uh, say we dropped this perpendicular from the point C to the line AB, and consider this angle here, angle alpha. And uh, just to be totally general, maybe there's a different angle on the other side, an angle beta. Uh, what can we say about these angles? alpha and beta. And these angles are called the angles of parallel parallelism. Okay, and uh, if you are looking just a little bit ahead, theorem 9.2 uh, says something that's actually very strong about these two. It says that they're going to both be congruent to one another and that they're going to be acute. Uh, one thing that I do want to draw attention to multiple times is that this angle of parallelism appears to be dependent upon the segment that is discussed. So the, this same segment that's mentioned in the um, in the theorem is actually referring to this segment CF right here. And uh, what we're going to find later is that the length of this segment, the distance that C is from the line AB, actually uh, can change the value of these angles of parallelism. But theorem 9.2 says no matter, as long as we're looking at considering the same segment, we can say that they're going to be congruent. The left and right-hand side are going to be congruent angles and uh, that they are going to be acute angles. Okay. And so for our proof, um, I guess I left a bunch of space here. We'll use it. So we have our point C. And we're going to suppose that um, we have different angles. So we have a right parallel angle, a right parallel over here, say that that's alpha, the angle there, and a left parallel, say that that angle is beta. Now suppose that alpha is bigger than beta. Okay? If this angle here, if this angle alpha is bigger than beta, then that means that we could draw um, a line over here on this side so that the angle right here is equal to beta. So if beta is smaller than alpha, then we can construct this line inside this angle here. Now, because this is the right parallel, uh, and this line passes underneath the parallel, then this line must intersect the line AB. Because remember, the right parallel is the closest you can get to the line AB on the right side without actually intersecting it. Well, now, if this line intersects AB, then we can... I'm really sorry about all these uh, alarms. Um, then we can just reflect this point over here. Let's call this... I don't know, I didn't carefully look. Uh, I guess we're going to call that G. Then we can reflect this line over, or this point over to this side, and uh, construct a point H. Well, that, by the, the congruence of these triangles, then tells us that this left parallel line must actually not be parallel because it must intersect the line AB. So if the right angle of parallelism is bigger, then the left parallel isn't really the left parallel. Okay? So this contradicts the assumption that the left parallel line does not intersect AB. And that's bad because it's supposed to be the left parallel line. That's its definition. Okay, so we showed that if the right angle of parallelism is bigger than the left angle of parallelism, that leads to a contradiction. And there's really nothing nothing special about assuming that the right is bigger than the left. If they are different, then we can we can uh, we can basically build this contradiction. So if beta happened to be if beta happened to be bigger than alpha, then we would have just constructed an angle a smaller angle alpha in beta and gotten the same contradiction on the, on the other side. So these segments have to be congruent, or these angles have to be congruent, and now we're going to show that they have to be acute. So again, say we have the line AB and the point C, and we have this segment that's 90 degrees. Uh, suppose that our angle of parallelism is a right angle. Okay? So if it's a right angle, that means that uh, you can't get any closer to the line AB than drawing this line at a right angle. Okay, so if you can't get any closer on the right than by drawing at this right angle, and you can't get any closer on the left than by going at this right angle, then there is actually only one line that doesn't intersect AB. And that seems really familiar because that's exactly what happens in Euclidean geometry. But that's not where we're, where we're living. Uh, if alpha 
is equal to 90 degrees, there is only one line through C that does not intersect AB. And this is a contradiction. This contradicts uh, a rather important result, or rather important statement, the characteristic postulate of hyperbolic geometry. Not contracts, contradicts the characteristic postulate of hyperbolic geometry. So 90 degrees is no good, uh, and being obtuse is even worse, um, because this line at 90 degrees will always be a non-intersecting line, and so if the angle of parallelism is somehow supposed to be bigger than 90 degrees, then, then that actually contradicts the assumption that you have the right parallel. If, ang if the angle alpha is bigger than 90 degrees, we get a contradiction to the definition of parallel line. Because we have a line here, this line, let's say, let's call this point, uh, A is no good, this line here, CD, is actually below this supposed right parallel line, and it's non-intersecting, and that can't be, if we're going to call this the right parallel line, uh, we're going to call CE the right parallel line. There can't be a line below it that also doesn't intersect AB. So we get a contradiction either way. So it can't be 90 degrees and it can't be obtuse. That leaves one case, and that is that the angle is acute. And we win.